recent years, it's kind of been the, the Eastern European countries that have dominated these classifications. Yeah, this is definitely... Sometimes at the European Championships, the big guys are missing because they're from Australia or America or Canada, but in these lower classification events, you really have got the best guys on show. And you'll be looking at people that will be winning here tonight, but also looking to win again in Rio in, in September. Chalpina go for Portugal in lane number one. Portuguese, of course, not confirmed their selection either for Rio, so they haven't got many places. I think just two male places for Portugal, so it's not a lot, is it? No, not at all, and that, that really puts the pressure on the swimmers, but I think they saw this event as an opportunity where their home athlete could really raise their game, so it was best to keep the qualification window open. We saw Kokarev there, the European record holder, there's Palmachuk from Ukraine. So the silver medalist, Pat Kokarev, the, the champion from 2014, Palmachuk, the silver medalist from 2014. Kokarev's European record was set at the World Championships last year in Glasgow, 421.94. And Macho did win the 100 backstroke gold medal at those World Championships. And you ask, well, why is that significant? Because generally, in this S2 class, pretty much all the swimmers are going to be swimming backstroke in this freestyle event. Yeah, it's just another example of how they've adapted what they've got available to them and their best strokes to get the most out of their event and to post the best times. This is always a fascinating year that the coaches pretty much have employed all the same starting techniques there. The coaches holding the swimmer's feet onto the wall. They can't add propulsion, but they can hold the feet onto the wall at the start. Yeah, that gets the athletes into a really good position because a lot of them have impaired from quite a bit, like quite high up, so they, their legs drop from the drag and trying to get moving off the wall if their feet were, were down almost on the floor be, would add seconds to their time. And again, it's something that we've seen. I mean, you saw all the, the uh, athletes there, all the 10 athletes employ the same starting technique, but that wasn't always the case a few years ago. No, absolutely. I mean, you can have such a range of impairments included in this group. You can have those with severe limb deficiency, or you can have cerebral palsy athletes. And obviously, they have the ability to hold on to the start block and then use the push. Jim Anderson was a classic example. He had a very good start. He could, he could propel himself off the wall. And get, then once he started moving, he used to slip a lot of water because he, he couldn't get his fingers together to act as paddles to push through the water. Whereas he, and you'll see here now, these guys, some of them using single arm technique, others using double arm technique. It really is just about what works best for you. The Russians and the Ukrainians, as we said, dominating this event. Kokarev was the man who really pushed the standards on after he came onto the scene about 10 years ago now, actually. I think he was at the World Championships back in 2006, from memory, and he it all his own way in recent years. He's been challenged by the likes of Palomar Chuk and also by Yang Yang of China, who broke the world record last year in Russia. So that must have hurt Kokarev. It's really interesting, actually, in this classification group, that when someone does find an innovative way of doing something and it does improve their, their stroke or their time, there's a significant improvement in time, and then everyone's playing catch-up. Well, they're all playing catch up on these two guys at the front there. Paul Marincho just kind of uh, twisting himself around the wall there. He's quite flat on the water, just touched the wall, twist his body around. He's very tall, so actually it's really difficult when you don't have control of most of the below your sternum to get them around the wall because it's, it's not really that big a space between main groups. Kokarev, uh, athlete with cerebral palsy. Paul Marchuk, spinal injury. So you see the range of disabilities. Just come 
together there in this S2 classification. And Kokarev is, is quite sort of more jerky in the water. He kind of lunges his whole body back, doesn't he? Yeah, he'll have a lot less control over what he's got available to him because of his cerebral palsy. You don't quite have the same ability to place your hand, your limb. But as you can see, he's got a, he can, he's got more speed with his arms, so he's doing more strokes per minute than the other guys. Which is, and when it's going well, you have a really good day and you see him swim really well. But the only problem with that is when you're having a bad day, it tends to go quite badly. Well, I think he's having a good day at the moment because he's pretty much on his European record pace here, Kokarim. I just wonder if he's going to come back strongly here. Yeah, and this will be the difference in this classification compared to the, the higher classifications that we've seen earlier in the session. They don't have the ability to change through as many gears as the more functional athletes, say maybe in the S10 classification. So if they are, if they are swimming well, then we'll see good heat times even though we've only got to drop two athletes. We are up for a very good heat time here. Kokarev and Palomarchuk. Palomarchuk actually coming back, he gets a lot more grip, doesn't he, on the water there. Looks like he's propelling himself through very well. His body very, very straight in the water, keeping that buoyancy up there. But let's have a check on the clock here. It could be very, very good here. European record 421.94, and that is gone. 419.83 for Kokarev. Well, we said he was on for a good swim. Fantastic swim there. And Halamarchuk also inside the old European record, 421.63. That's great he's doing, and as I said, really fast times. And we'll, I would say we'll see some similar times this evening, but a great race to these two, and we'll just about how much rest and, and nutrition they can get inside them between the heats and the finals today. Kokarev there, very good, but you know what? He did not shake off Palomarchuk at all. This could be a really close battle in the final tonight, I think. Nice Kokarev, not really showing any emotion there. But he'll be very, very satisfied with his morning's work. What's the remaining few swimmers still left to come in? Yeah, check, check. Experienced man, 40 year old now from Poland. He will secure his place in the final. It looks like Chelpina is going to do the same. Just at the top of your shot there, the Portuguese swimmer will claim that final spot in the final this evening. So we'll have a Portuguese finalist tonight if these results are confirmed. Looks like Elena from Romania is going to be ahead of Wojciech Franic. But very good. First European record we've seen. Excellent. Hopefully a sign of things to come. It's Kokarev there. Off the start. Straight into his stroke, wasn't he? Yeah, he hasn't got any time to waste at the water, obviously, because you need your arms to propel yourself. The only way to do that is from the surface of the water. So we see these guys straight up and into their strokes and pulling away. We saw him pull away. But look how flat he is. Not backstroke, as I alluded to earlier, my face going into the water all the time. <laughs> but even he dived through the wall then, and he had to throw his head back because he doesn't have the legs to propel him. That is going to be a really good contest tonight. A little bit of a smile there, he's getting out of the water, I think. Oh, he just seems to get his arms quite high, quite close in, up at the top of his head there, Kokarev. Yeah, Dimitri does have a good level of rota amount of rotation, but then, like we, as I said, while he was swimming, his hands don't come together to create such good paddles, so he tends to slip a lot more water, so he has to rely on that rotation to get enough strokes to be ahead. Dmitry Kokarev with the European record makes it into the final in first position for 1983. Alamarchuk in second. Michael Dimitris from Greece.